All right, we're going to have a look at how to create a rock, paper, scissors game on uh, Adafruit's uh, Circuit Playground Express um, using Microsoft's Make Code, and it's going to have a scoring element. So you'll see that using these 10 awesome NeoPixels, I've, I've needed to be a little creative to figure out how to represent rock, paper, and scissors, and then you'll see how we kept track of the score. So the input I'll use is on shake. So I'm going to shake. And there are my uh, 10 NeoPixels. I've got eight of them to light up to be um, paper. So I'm going to say, OK, that's a point for player A. So I'll press button A. Then I'll shake again. We get paper again. But this time, player B wins. Give her a point. Shake. Oh, there's uh, scissors. So here's the handle. There's the blades. That's going to be B again. Shake. There's a rock for B. And another scissors. So let's give A a couple more points, B some more points um, after we play for a while. And each player could have their own Circuit Playground Express, or uh, you could even be playing this in a simulator or just sharing one back and forth. So the button presses have been um, adding to that variable to display the variable. First, we're going to show player A's score in NeoPixels, and then there'll uh, be a pause, and then we'll see player B's score. So I'm going to do buttons A and B press. So player A got three wins to uh, seven for player B. And then we reset. If I press those buttons again, those variables have been reset, so they're empty, and I won't see any score um, after the reset. All right, let's get coding our rock, paper, and scissors with uh, scoring. So I don't, actually don't need my forever loop. I'm going to throw that out. And instead, the input that's going to select rock, paper, or scissors is going to be on shake. I'll put that up here. We've got rock, paper, or scissors. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to conditionals in the logic drawer. And I'm going to pull out an if true, then else. And I need a third spot because I've got rock, paper, I want a slot for scissors. So I'm going to click that plus sign to give me a third spot. And then I'm going to depict my uh, rock, paper, and scissors here with uh, three different show rings. And I'll kind of speed through um, creating those, but you can create them any way you want. Okay, now I've got my uh, rock, paper, and scissor icons, and I'm ready to start coding for to make the program actually pick one of them to display. All right, so to do that, I'm going to need to um, make uh, a variable. So the first variable I'm going to make is called RPS, and for rock, paper, scissors. Again, this I could call this anything I want. The name is has no bearing on on how it works. But it just is good practice to name it uh, something related to what it actually does. So, so you just uh, it's just mentally easier to keep track of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to set uh, what RPS is going to be. So let's let's take out a set block and we're going to put it so that on shake the very first thing that happens is that this variable gets set to something. We have rock, paper, scissors. We have three items, so we need three choices. So I'm going to go down to math here, this math drawer, and I'm going to pull out a pick random 0 to 10 lozenge. And I'm going to put that in the set variable block. And I don't want to pick random 0 to 10, but I need three numbers. So I'm going to say 0 to 2, so 0, 1, and 2. Um, our three values, so 0, 1, 2. And now I'm ready to, uh, you know, it's going to pick one of these numbers randomly, and then I can assign them to these three different uh, rock, paper, scissors uh, show rings. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my logic drawer, and I want to compare uh, uh, the variable to um, a number. So I'm going to pull out my comparison diamond. I'm going to put it right here in the if something equals something uh, 
can, uh, spot here. And what do I want to compare? I want to compare whatever's in the variable. So I'm going to pull out the rock, paper, scissors uh, lozenge and put that in the first spot. So what I'm saying is if whatever's in this variable equals zero, then show this. So the first thing it does is it checks to see is what's in RPS zero? No? Okay, well, then that's not going to happen. Um, so I'll grab another diamond and do the same procedure right here. But for the paper, I'm going to say else if what's in rock, paper, scissors is one, then show paper. So we randomly pick 0, 1, or 2. And then the program checks. Is, is what was randomly put in here 0? Um, yes or no. So show this or don't. If it's, if it's not 0, then is it 1? If it is, show this. If not, then. And then so you actually don't need a diamond down here because it's either 0, 1, or something else. right? So we only have three possibilities. So the third one is the else, which is the scissors uh, possibility. All right, so we have kind of the basics of our program here. So I can click on the sh on shake in the simulator, and it picked a zero, one, or two. Apparently, it picked three. Or sorry, apparent it picked two, the else, and so it showed the scissors. Shake again, picked a one. Shake again, uh, picked two, etc. So. Uh, that's uh, so we have the sort of bones of our program here. Now there's some useful things to do. So what if it picks the same uh, uh, show ring to display twice in a row? How would you know? You know, you might think, oh, did I shake it correctly or not? And uh, so if it picks the same right there, for example, it picked rock twice, and so the the these didn't change. So one thing that's helpful is to sort of flash a color in between so you know something happened. So I'm going to go to my light drawer. I'm going to grab a set all pixels too. Um, I'm going to throw in a purple. And then I want it to display purple just for a brief, brief, uh, I'm going to say 200 milliseconds. So pretty quick little flash. So it should flash purple and then show the uh, whatever the pick is. And I'm just going to duplicate uh, those two blocks a couple times so that in between each uh, pick, it's just giving a quick little indication. Oops, don't want to do that. Remove comment, duplicate. There we go. All right, so now wait for the simulator to catch up. There we go. Shake, and there's a quick flash of purple that tells me something happened. All right, so our uh, our our pick here is is uh, working well. Now let's uh, code the scoring aspect of our game. Um, and so the score is going. The input for the two scores are going to be um, button presses, and Uh, so on button A, button B, and now to keep track of the score, we need another couple of variables. So let's make those, and we can call these uh, whatever we want, but again, good practice to name them something that relates to what they are. We could call them the player's names, potentially. Um, but So we have A score, make another one, and we call that B score, and so now we have two ways of sort of tracking uh, scores, putting numbers in these variable bins that um, and that we can then later view. So um, when we press A score, we want player A's score to go up by one. So we want to change that score by one. And likewise, when we press button B, we're going to want B scores uh, variable bin uh, to have one added to that. And as with this set all pixels to and then pause, uh, it's handy to flash a light so that we know we kind of have a little assurance 
that something happened when we um, pressed that button. So we're going to set all pixels to. Um, we need to see it um, briefly. So let's go with the, the 200 millisecond um, flash. And again, I can use some keyboard shortcuts and uh, duplicate that. All right, so now we're adding to the score and let's throw in a, uh, we'll go down to the, and find a clear block here at the bottom. And that's going to, first we'll set the pixels to orange. We'll add, you know, for 200 milliseconds, so a fifth of a second. We'll change the score by one and then we'll clear those pixels so we're kind of ready to, for the next uh, display. Um, so here we're tracking the two scores, but of course we also want to be able to see them. It's no good if we can't actually see um, the score. So to do that, we're going to have another, we're going to grab another uh, on button click from the, the input drawer, but we're going to change this to buttons A and B. And for this, we're going to go to our light drawer and we're going to grab this graph zero up to zero block and this is an interesting one so what it basically does is it's it to graph means to light up uh, in this sense anyway it means to light up pixels and the first zero is you can think of this like a fraction okay so how many pixels do we have to work with we have 10 um, so if I grab zero up to 10 that's I'm lighting up zero of 10 pixels. If I graph five up to 10, that would be five of these pixels, right? So it's like a, it's like this is the denominator and this is the numerator of a fraction. If I said 10 of 20, that would also graph five pixels. All right, but we, uh, what we want to graph, what we want to display is actually um, player A's variable here. So what that's going to do, let's say I press uh, button A five times, okay? So this variable then holds the number five. And then if I press A and B, that means I want to show whatever's in the A score variable, which is five up to 10. So again, that would be five pixels. If this was nine, it would be nine of the NeoPixels. Um, Okay, so first thing I want to do is I want to I want to show that. How long do I want to show that for? We need to pause the the program for a length of time so uh, so that it doesn't move on to the next part of the code. So that's three seconds. Seems like a good amount of time. Jump over to my light drawer, scroll down, and I'm going to then clear those NeoPixels that I've just shown, and. Um, you know, clear those. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw in another quick pause. So it clears, holds that clear for 200 milliseconds, and then I'm going to duplicate my uh, graph score block. But I'm gonna now do uh, player B score. So again, it's acting like a fraction, uh, showing player B score. I'm gonna duplicate my pause block and. Drop that down here. All right, so now, and I can check this in the simulator, if I, let's say, player A wins a bunch of times and player B only wins three times, and then I'm gonna click on my A and B, and so there's eight pixels for A score and only three for B score. All right, great, so my, my scoring is working as it should, but then to keep playing, I would want to then um, set the two scores back to zero. So I want to reset those two variables. And then just I might just throw in another color block just to kind of reassure myself that that's what happened. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a purple down here just to kind of flash at the very end. All right, so there's our, our rock, paper, scissors. Um, if I shake, I get. Uh, a random rock, paper, or scissors. There's a rock, there's scissors, there's paper. Um, score one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
All right, and so those numbers, those button presses are being held in those variables. To display the variables, I'm going to graph them. So there's the one, two, three pixels for three seconds, and then there's my six. All right, there's rock, paper, scissors in MakeCode with scoring.